Hi, I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to have you join me. I want to share this quilt with you. I want to show you how to make an easy Christmas rag quilt, just like the one hanging behind me. It's a simple project, and because we're taking a few, maybe we'll call them shortcuts, but some easy techniques that's going to save you time. The biggest one is taking the batting out of the quilt and just using flannel instead. It's a time saver, it's easier to cut, it's easier to sew, and the quilt goes together much more simply. Plus, there's some tools along the way that are going to help you as well. I'm going to do a demonstration quilt and show you step by step, and we're going to use the offset method. I love that one, offsetting those rows so we don't have any matching seams. How easy is that? This is going to be a quilt you'll make again and again because it is that fast and easy. So let's get started. Here's my original Christmas quilt that I'm going to demonstrate in this video how to make. I'm going to do it on a smaller scale. But what I want to show you is that these blocks, oops, let's go this way, finish at seven inches. So these started out as eight inch squares. And then with the half inch seam on each side, they finish at seven inches. There are three layers of fabric. So I just have a, a cotton fabric on top, a regular quilting cotton, and two layers of a lightweight flannel. And you can see that there's a checkerboard pattern here. And what I'm, I'm going to demonstrate also in this video is how to create an offset seam like this and notice what that does see how these seams don't line up corner to corner which makes it so much easier because that's a lot to sew through it's a lot to cut through and that's where you're going to get your your uh, strings knotting up all your threads get knotted up when you sew sew your uh, quilt and then wash it so this works out really well i like this pattern it's a lot of fun what I want you also to notice, and I'm looking for one that you can see clearly that doesn't have a lot of print in it, is that I just sewed the three layers together. Because the flannel is the same size as the other blocks, so the bottom block is flannel, the middle block is flannel, the top is just a straight quilt cotton, they're all cut to the same dimension. So that means all the fabrics are sewn together in the seam and they're held together tightly. They're not going to come loose, um, like when you use batting in a rag quilt. I'm going to show you a, an example of that. Now, what you will find, and this was probably just a little bigger than I should have gone without sewing an X, because I'll get a little bit of puckering here and there. I'm okay with that. I don't worry about that too much. So my general rule is on smaller blocks, I'll just put the three layers and sew them together without making the X. But this is shown obviously that the X is going to make a, a better finish. And I would say probably six inches and above. A five inch you can get away with, but I just would think you might be happier with it if you um, put the X across this just to hold everything in place. Now, one other thing I want to show you, I just happened to notice. Can you see the seam right here? Um, again, I, I do lots of scrap quilts. And when I say scraps, I mean my stash, I guess, is a better way to use it. I put my pieces together to make it be the full piece that I want. Rather than putting five or six different fabrics, I want to keep the look of one big block next to each other so i'll just join the fabrics and you can see that seam right there and it really isn't noticeable here's one that i patched up and i just put two together the colors are similar it doesn't stand out a whole lot it works really well do you see how that offset pattern creates such a fun design on the back so here's the full size block and we have the offset block and then that begins the staggering pattern and I really like that. And again, that's what I'm going to demonstrate in this quilt that we're doing today. Here's an example of a rag quilt that's done with batting. We've got the X in here because if you don't sew the X when you have batting, so there's the top layer, there's the batting layer, and then there's the bottom layer of fabric. 
if you don't use the X, the batting is going to cinch up on you. The batting is only cut to the seam allowance. So it doesn't get sewn into the seam. If it does, you have all this white fuzzy stuff sticking out and it's not very attractive at all. So I find that when I use the batting, definitely use the X no matter what size block you're making. Um, and I also prefer using more flannel because see the difference on these in the flannel and just the cotton. So this has flannel on the back so I've got a much thicker thicker um, frayed edge here with this only has the two layers of cotton with batting in the middle there's no flannel in this so this tends to be less less fluffy you don't get that that full frayed edge and then this the whole quilt was done with the same fabric on back oh here's another tree this this is the guy that I like he came out really cute. And I made a little rag edge um, for the uh, for the label itself. And then I just stitched a little tree on here. And I'll put the, the uh, website where I demonstrate and just sort of show some of these different quilt labels. I think it's fun to, to put an interesting label on your quilt. And then where these are all sewn together... You can see the X's hold it all really well. And I do change my threads when I'm, I'm doing white. The one I'm demonstrating today, I did change my threads a couple times just because I don't want this dark thread going across here. Not that it's going to have a huge effect. This quilt is actually a Christmas tree. You may have seen it. The pattern's been around for a long time. It's called O oh Christmas Tree. It's really a great pattern. This was this was one of my first ones and and it's, you know, there there were mistakes and there were challenges and I've learned a lot since I made this, but I love this pattern. I just think it's adorable. So, I've got that uh that link below where you can find it. This is really a fun quilt and this is all Christmas fabrics on this side and then on the back are green batiks that I think turned out really well. So these are all just different batiks mixed in here of varying sorts I put around the edge. So there's there's a lot of fun things you can do with, with quilts and of course on this one it didn't come with a trunk but I added a couple squares so I could have a tree trunk under my tree. Those are just some, some tips that I want to show you. So now let's get started on the demonstration. I'm going to use 10 inch squares and I'm going to start by cutting them out of fat quarters. Right now I have four fat quarters here and I'm going to cut them into 10 inch strips and then I'll cross cut those to get my pair from each fat quarter. Now I'm cutting across the 20 inch. This is 18, so I'm not going to use those. If I come up short and need more blocks, I can certainly sew two of these together because I have the 20 inches this way. I can cut this in half, sew it together, and then I have my my half uh, or I have my blocks but there's also another option that we have with these and I'm going to show you that here in a little bit so don't don't put those aside too far we will need them and I'm going to trim this edge when I laid these fat quarters out I lined this bottom uh, edge of each fat quarter together so by starting with one straight edge and then I work from this corner I I trim that to get my 10 inch to get an even line and then I come over 10 inches and I'm going to cut this so now I have four 10 inch blocks here ready to go and I'm going to do the same and let's see we'll be right here so now I have eight blocks all set to go for my quilt top and I have a nice set of strips here, some extra that I can throw in my stash for a project in the future. But I also want to show you, in addition to cutting from fat quarters, you can also cut from scraps, uh, different scrap pieces that you have. Let me show you how that works. Here's a group of fat quarter scraps that I had left over from a previous quilt. So by laying the 
largest ones to the bottom and then to the smallest on top and this is I think what about 10 by 12 so everything is at least 10 inches by 10 inches and then I'm just going to cut across I line up on my bottom edge to make sure I have that straight these were all previously cut so this edge is nice and straight already I'm going to come over to my 10 inch mark and trim this now remember we are making a rag quilt so we want to remove all selvages. You know what, before I go all the way through, I'm going to cut this across on my 10 inch line. The reason being is I'm going to get a larger piece of scrap. Whoops, that's not the 10 inch line. I was gonna say something didn't look right there. Um, I wanna get the, the biggest scrap piece as possible when I'm cutting. And this longer piece, if I cut across this way first, will give me the larger scrap pieces. So I'm going to set that aside, and now I'm going to finish cutting this line. Had I cut those in half, I wouldn't have had um, as many options as to what to do with them. So I'll come right here. There we go. So there's my first 10, and I'm just going to come straight over here to 10 inches, yep, right there is 10, and cut this one. So these I know aren't gonna work. These are all too small. Now this is just salvages, I'll, I'll throw that away, but these pieces will have use in the future. But right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's awesome. So I have 12 10 inch blocks here. This is where I want to show you why I'm calling this an easy rag quilt. And anytime you can avoid matching seams, that's going to be a very easy quilt. And I'm going to show you how this is going to work on a small scale. And this is what we're going to do for the bigger quilt. So let's say these are our rows one and two and we're going to come across here and we'll do three across and then i'm going to have two down here Let's just use a little different color so you can see and notice how these seams are going to fall in the center in order to make that happen, we need to put a half block on each side. In addition to the 10 inch squares that we're going to use, we're also going to need six of the five and a half by 10. Now you can't just take a 10 inch block and cut it in half because we need to add enough for that half inch seam allowance. Once we take that seam allowance in, then it's going to be even with the sides. Otherwise, you will come up short. So make sure you add that half inch. But by doing this, what we'll do is we'll sew each row together. The first row will have six blocks, six full 10 inch blocks. This row will only have five, but it's going to have a half on each side. So that makes up the sixth block. But by splitting that block in half on either end, that allows us to get these offset seams. So we're going to do three rows like this and three rows like this. And I'm going to show you later how to chain stitch this with this offset. It goes together very quickly, but we do have another step before we can get there. Actually, we need to finish cutting. And then I'm going to show you how to quilt your squares and then how to place them in order to sew your, uh, your chain stitching. So we've got a few more steps to go. Let me take you to what's next. Here are the steps we need to follow in order to create our rag blocks. Each one is going to have three layers. There'll be the back layer, a middle layer, and the top layer. Now, my top layer is just a, a cotton, a quilt cotton fabric. And uh, the bottom layer is a lightweight flannel. 
And then the middle is a flannel. Now this is just an old flip piece of flannel I had. It's going to be in the middle. No one's going to see what it's going to be. So I just cut up what I have. This is really kind of a scrap quilt. Um, and making it in the same manner as I did the Christmas quilt that you saw. And this is going together as a spare. When the kids come over, the grandkids come over, we need an extra quilt for watching TV on the floor. So I kind of have some Christmassy colors and the back is going to have a lot of this patch uh, flannel there along with these greens. And I think it's going to be very pretty. Now notice here, I ran out of blocks. I had to make a seam. Once this quilt is put together, that is not going to be visible. So if you have to, you know, piece a few things together, that's fine. Now, if you have to piece the blocks for a rag quilt, I make them a little more than a quarter inch and I press them open. If I had to do this, I would do the same thing because I don't want a large lump or bump where the seam allowance is. And that's why this blends in because it's nice and flat. If you have that seam allowance tucked in under there all to one side, it's going to create a bit of a rise in the fabric and that's what makes it visible. So the first thing you're going to do is stage your fabric in the way we're going to piece it together because we need to do our cross stitch from corner to corner. So we put the backing down first, then we put the middle layer. Now remember the backing, if it has a right side like this does, has to go right side down. The middle layer can go either way because it's not going to be visible and the top goes with the right side up. And then what we're going to do is stack all of them together that way so that each has, has their three pieces and it just saves time at the machine or when you're sewing so that you don't have to keep pulling and put it together and oh I missed one here or, or whatever may happen. This is just a good double check and when you sit at the machine you can just speed it through quickly. So the first step you're going to do is start at one corner and sew to the next corner. Then you're going to feed the next block in and again go corner to corner. Now what I'm going to recommend to you is that rather than using your regular sewing foot with a smooth bottom like this, I recommend that you use what's called a walking foot, an even feed walking foot. And the reason it works so well for like this, you may have seen, seen it used for free motion quilting, doing some straight line quilting. This is great for that, but it's wonderful for rag quilts because we're sewing together three layers at one time. And if you use this foot because it's smooth, the top fabric is just going to slide right underneath it. And what happens is when we're using the feed dogs on the bottom only, it's pulling the bottom fabric and not the top. So your squares are going to end up skewed. You'll come up a little bit short on each one of your corners because that flannel is being pulled. So if you don't have a walking foot, as you're sewing, put your three pieces together and just sort of gently hold these. Don't pull them, but hold it taut so that it's going to be less apt to draw too much fabric on that bottom layer. But this solves that problem. You will get really nice straight stitching. And when I mean straight stitching, I mean the, the fabrics are going to stay together and everything lines up straight in the corners. And that just makes putting the final quilt together so much easier. These are made for specific machines as well as universal models. So if your machine did not come with this, then you can go out and buy it either directly from that manufacturer or as a universal. But if you'll notice, this has, as this moves, because this is moving with the needle, it's bringing up these feed dogs on the top layer, and that's what's pulling the fabric through, and that's what makes the magic. That makes sewing on this so much easier. So that's something that I, I highly recommend. It makes a huge difference. So this stack has been done. I used a green thread on top because most of these are greens. And um, the back, I used a white. Now, I, some of the thread pulled through, but I'm not too worried about that. 
once it's washed, we're not going to see that. I didn't realize I needed to adjust my tension. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to do the same thing with this. Now, I have double because this is going to be my middle layer as well as the back layer. It just happened to be what I had that worked. So I'm going to layer these together for my side pieces of the offset rows. I'm going to finish sewing these. Then we're going to start putting the quilt together. This goes together very, very quickly. And I think you're going to appreciate how some of these steps in the beginning will just make it finish that much quicker. So here we are with the chain stitching. We've got all our blocks together. We have everything quilted from corner to corner. And now we're going to assemble the quilt. And what we're going to do is sew the rows together with a half inch seam and you're going to chain stitch. So this is connected all the way through. One thing I didn't mention that you need to keep in mind is a quilt like this is going to take some heavy, heavy machine work and you're going to want to have a nice sharp needle in your sewing machine. It's always good to start with a new needle when you're going to start a, a larger quilt just because it's going to create a much smoother stitch for you. Now for a rag quilt like this, you're going to want to use a size 14. If you're going with a denim, then you're going to use a 16. But an 11 would be too light. You might be able to skimp by with a 12, but the heavier needle is just going to do a better job for you and your machine is going to sew a lot more smoothly. So that's one point to keep in mind. The other thing that I want to show you as we put our quilt together, remember in the beginning, we put our first row of six blocks. One, two, three, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six blocks. But then the next row was going to have five with two halves. So when I'm sewing my first blocks together, I'm going to sew this one, and then the second row will have the half block. So when that opens up, it's going to fall in place like this. We're going to continue that all the way across. We're going to have our five, one, two, three, four, five. And then this block will extend to this side. And you're going to do that all the way down. So you'll have a row of six and then a row with five and two halves. Then another row of six, a row of five and two halves, and then do that one more time. So we're going to have a six by six quilt, which works out really well because what are these 10? I think they're going to be nine inches. So this is going to be 54 inches. But you'll notice with this, with this offset, we can't just put this together and sew it we have to clip the seam apart. First off, I recommend only cutting one row at a time because if you cut them all and you get them out of order, it might make you a little crazy trying to figure out how to put it back together. Secondly, when you're cutting these threads, these threads between the seams, you want to make sure they are, are trimmed pretty close. If they are longer than a half inch, they're going to stick out in your rag quilt and the, the frayed edges in your rag seams. And those threads are a very different weight than what the fabric is. And so if you leave that in place, then as you're clipping, after you do all the washing, those seams are going to be very visible all the way through. Now with this row cut apart, we're going to line the edges up and we're going to sew. And notice how these seams are sewn open. If you sew them closed, it's just going to be too much bulk and it'll be difficult to clip, not to mention you'll get some knotted areas in there that just won't be very attractive. This just makes the appearance look so much nicer. So we're just going to sew along, opening the seams as we go. And we'll come all the way here to the end. And notice how these seams are offset in the center. So there's no matching seams. So you'll sew across and sew that one open. Make sure the bottom seam is open. 
and then your seams are going to look like this. Now, what is nice, because we did our X's on here, these are going to be very easy to open. The three layers are all sewn together, so when you go to open the bottom ones, you just need to go in and tuck in between and open those seams, and they're going to sew, sew very well. Now, these, you've got six layers here, but once you add these three, you've got nine, so make sure you don't try and push and sew too fast. Uh, sometimes you can break a needle if you're pulling that fabric because the needle doesn't have time to pull in and out of the fabric and the tip will snap off. So just be cautious. It's, it's not complicated, it's not difficult, but you don't need to be in a hurry. It's going to work out just fine. But I've, I've broken a needle just about in every rag quilt I make just because I tend to tug on that fabric a little bit too much. So this is how it's looking. We're going to get this, this row together. Then the last thing that I do is I go around the entire perimeter, the, all the edges of the quilt and it's just a little bit less than a half inch so it doesn't interfere with my final seam. This reinforces this edge and it also sews the seam open. So whether I finish the border like or finish the edge like this or add a border, I'm ready to start on whatever's next. So let me go ahead and uh, get this sewn on and then I want to show you how to do the clipping. That's really important and there's some some quick tips that I can show you that are going to make these corners a lot easier to clip. So let me get this sewn and I'll show you what's next. And now for the fun part, we're going to clip. There are some steps that you can take that's going to make it a little easier for you. If you've ever clipped a rag quilt before, or you've done a lot of cutting with a pair of shears like this, when you press down, your thumb has to pull it back up. And as you do this repeatedly, your thumb and this muscle through here gets really, really sore. When you discover a pair of spring-loaded clips, I'm telling you, it makes a huge, huge difference. So the first thing I do when I do a seam, and that's what I want to show you. So cutting through here, that's, that's fine. That works. But there's some tips right here that I really would like for you to see. I'm going to come in right there. Let's do it this way so you can see. So I'm going to come in on the side there and I'm going to come in on the side here. So now that's free to cut all the way down. I'm going to do the same thing here. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to come between the fold. So I'm going to snip right there. So that little piece folds forward, and I'm going to snip right here. Oops, oh, I can't get that. And so now these pieces are like that. Now, right here, see this is the seam. Right here, I'm going to step it over just a little bit, about right in half of where that clip is, and right a half here. And then I'm going to come in here and cut that right there. By making all these little clips, this is going to fray a lot more nicely, more evenly, and you're not going to have the potential of, of having too many knots. So what we're doing basically is offsetting these clips. We're offsetting all the clips so they're not exactly in the same place, and it's going to allow it to fray a little more smoothly. And then you're just going to come across and go about every half inch or so. And let's see, I want to find a seam. So we, we trim this one here, we clip that one. So let's come down, we're going to clip this. It's going to come in here, going to come in here. And see, this becomes very easy. And we're just going to come across down the row. You just got to be careful when you get up to this corner that you trim this, but you don't get too close to that seam. Now, you know, if you do trim too close and you cut and you, you uh, open this seam up, just take it back to your machine and sew a couple inches on either side just so it's reinforced and it's nice and tight like that. 
And let's see, we did one other one. Where's that one? This one here. So let's come down and we'll do this one one more time. I want to do it up close. So we're going to come in like this. We're going to come in like this. See, we come in on each side. Then we're going to come in between the fold. So that now opens up. We're going to come here inside the fold so that opens up. Now we're going to cut in between here like that and that will pull forward and now we're just going to cut this piece right here. And so that gives us a lot of loose cuts and it's going to fray really nice. Now, there is a downloadable um, PDF, it's a free download, down in the descriptions that has a pictorial review if that maybe helps um, just to have it close by while you're cutting. Just the first few times. Once you do it a few times, you'll get the hang of it and, and you'll, uh, you'll be doing it before you know it. So now we have to clip the whole thing, all the inside. If you're going to add a border, you don't want to clip this outside edge yet. I'm not going to add a border at this time, so I think I'm probably going to go through and I'll cut, I'll sew right on the actual half inch. And then that'll be my, the end of the quilt, the, the seam, so to speak. And then I can come back and clip it. Now, I took that first seam, it's like a stay stitch or a basting stitch, but it was less than a half inch. And I want to go back and do the full half inch. And that just reinforces all the seams on these edges so they don't pull out. That's why I usually like adding a border. It just reinforces that outer edge. So let's go ahead and get this done. I do want to show you the back after. It's kind of a, a checkerboard of sorts with all, all different blocks and colors and obviously lots of string. This is a messy project. You get a, a lot of strings and threads going every which way. But let's go ahead and get this uh, get this clipped. I'll show you the final clip when it's done, and then we're going to put it in the washing machine and let the washer do the rest of the work for us. All right, all the clipping is finished. All across the rows, around the edges. And now it's time for the final step of washing and drying, and then get a view of what this is going to look like. I like these colors, and the back looks fun, and an awful lot of thread floating around. Okay, let me throw this in the wash, and we'll see the great reveal. And here's our quilt, fresh out of the dryer. Um, it is still a bit linty. I'm probably going to run it through one more rinse cycle, just to get the rest of these little strings out. But look at how wonderful these seams lay, and just... Where they join, it's not big and clumpy. A lot of times when you get um, seams that are at a four corner, this gets really knotted and there's just way too much fabric right there. So what you want to do when you take it out of the dryer is look for little bits like this. Now, generally, I don't have too many and I think it's because by clipping close, most of your... Um, fabric that's going to slip out, the threads that'll slip out are going to be a bit on the shorter side as opposed to the longer threads. And again, it's the corners where you would generally get the knots. But I really am pleased with how this turned out. And of course, we've got the back, which is a bit of a, a checkerboard pattern. And it's just sort of randomly placed. I didn't necessarily other than alternating between the greens and the whites, I didn't really worry too much about where the greens were placed. So I'll get a, a bigger shot where you can see how this turned out. But I'm really happy with it, and I think it's going to be perfect for what I want. And as you can see, I finished the edge with just a straight stitching. I actually did two rows to reinforce it and clip the edges and that worked out great and I'm just very happy with this and see how that offset row just works so nicely everything worked really well 
So I hope you enjoyed this quilt and I hope that you make one for yourself. It's a great way to use up scraps. It's a fun way to make a gift for somebody. And it's just nice to have a comfy, cozy quilt on the couch or chair when you go to sit down and relax. So give it a try and let me know what you think. Thanks so much for being here.